Good evening. My name is Dr. Philip Williams and I am an orthopedic surgeon at UT Ortho specializing in sports medicine. I treat athletes of all ages and competition levels. However, tonight I would like to draw particular attention to avoiding overuse injuries in growing athletes, which is especially important now that we are proposing strategies to begin safe sports participation. Approximately 60 million youth aged 6 to 18 years participate in organized athletics. There is a growing trend towards specialized training at an earlier age. Likewise, the incidence of overuse injuries has risen precipitously. The definition of an overuse injury is microtraumatic damage to bone, muscle, or tendon that has been subjected to repetitive stress without sufficient time to heal or undergo the natural reparative process. One third of all overuse injuries occur in the knee. The most common overuse injury is known as patellofemoral syndrome, which is runner's knee also. Um, patella tendonitis is also known as jumper's knee is very common. Achilles tendonitis, shin splints are all other common use overuse injuries. Growth plate injuries of the elbow and shoulder and stress fractures are particularly common in growing athletes that need to be emphasized and prevented at all costs. There are four progressive stages of overuse injuries. The first stage is pain in the affected area after physical activity. The second stage is pain in the affected area during activity without restricting performance. And the third stage is pain during the activity that restricts performance. And lastly, the fourth stage is chronic unremitting pain even at rest. It is important to try to intervene at the earliest stage possible. However, many athletes do not seek any attention until they get to the third stage where they're having pain that keeps them out of athletic competition. And the fourth stage is the most dangerous stage where there is pain even when they're sitting down or walking or doing very limited activities. And this can be a sign of something more serious. So why are growing athletes pushing themselves so hard? A widely held perception is that elite development of athletes requires participation in one sport from an early age and, at, and playing it virtually year round. By the end of this presentation, my goal is to have everyone understand that specializing in one sport early is not the recipe for long term athletic success, and in fact it could be the opposite. Why are growing athletes prone to overuse injury? In adolescence, muscles, bones, tendons, and ligaments are not fully developed, and these undeveloped musculoskeletal tissue increases their risk for overuse injuries. Young pitchers are at especially high risk because of their unique throwing mechanics. In young pitchers, their biomechanics require the use of their rotator, rotator cuff musculature and multiple rotations in their trunk and humerus or their arm bones and when this is combined with undeveloped muscles it puts stress on the growth plates and other muscles and tendons in the shoulder and elbow that can cause serious problems in the future. Baseball and pitchers specifically have received the most scrutiny in terms of overuse injuries in adolescence. This is largely because there have been numerous studies looking at the exponential numbers of injuries to one of the most important elbow ligaments, the ulnar collateral ligament, in adolescent baseball players. This injury is directly attributable to overuse, and as a result of these studies, youth baseball foundations have instituted pitch count limitations since about 2006. Gymnastics is different from other sports because peak performance actually occurs in adolescence, and unlike other sports, gymnasts are always learning new skills with increasing difficulty that create different loads on the body. Additionally, few gymnasts compete at a high level past the early 20s. Common injuries of gymnasts include spondylolysis, which is a stress fracture in the lower back, and this can occur from multiple attempts at back walk or walkover skills, especially in girls. Wrist injuries are very common in gymnasts because the upper extremity becomes a weight-bearing joint 
and this predisposes them to stress fractures, also known as gymnast wrist. Hip and groin strains are very common complaints and the cause of multiple overuse injuries in ice hockey players. There's evidence that femoral acetabular impingement, which is a condition where the ball of the hip does not fit inside of the socket of the hip perfectly, can be the source of groin pain in young ice hockey players. However, this is very different from common muscle strains and uh, pulls in the muscles and should be addressed promptly if this is a suspected cause of pain in a young ice hockey player. The majority of swimmers believe that shoulder pain is a normal part of training and they actually call it swimmer shoulder. However, young swimmers are at risk because of increased internal and external rotation of their shoulders and in addition, young swimmers are actually loose jointed and may have more instability in their shoulder and they have insufficient rest and recovery during training many times and this predisposes them to overuse injuries over and above what adult swimmers experience. A sports medicine doctor is an expert at diagnosing overuse injuries. First, it is important to obtain a thorough history of the athlete's training volume and the overall level of participation. It is important to note the participation of outside competition with private coaches, parents, and teammates because this counts as athletic exposures that count towards the overall time spent in training. Higher training volumes have been shown to have a direct relationship to higher overuse injuries. In female athletes, a menstrual history should be obtained and an evaluation uh, of both the female and male athlete diet is appropriate. Menstrual history is important because hormonal changes have been linked to injuries of muscle and bone. For most overuse injuries, obtaining an x-ray is extremely useful because it could show a growth plate injury or an obvious fracture that needs to be addressed urgently. Stress fractures are common and overlooked as growing pains, bone bruises, or normal wear and tear, and it may require more imaging such as an MRI because early stress fractures do not show up on x-rays and any physical exam finding of bony tenderness should prompt further imaging attention because stress fractures are important to intervene upon very early. There are three main risk factors for overuse injuries that can be grouped accordingly. Growth-related risk factors include susceptibility of the growth cartilage to repetitive stress and the adolescent growth spurt. Intrinsic factors include previous injury, level of conditioning, and anatomic factors. Extrinsic factors include training progression, equipment, footwear, and sport technique. Another risk factor for overuse injuries is a sports training ratio. Athletes with serious overuse injuries spent a ratio of organized practice to free play greater than two to one in a scientific study. And they found that unlike structured sports practice, unstructured free play is kid directed rather than adult directed. And this probably explains its lower injury risk. It is during free play that when a child gets cold, tired, hungry, bored, or sore, he or she will usually stop. But when being supervised by an adult or when participating in organized competition, the child may feel an expectation to continue playing and therefore may be more likely to push through pain or soreness, which predisposes them to injury. Sports specialization is the most important contributor to overuse injuries. Sports specialization is intensive year-round training in a single sport at the exclusion of other sports. What is early sports specialization? There are three criteria for this. The first is participation in intensive training and or competition in organized sports greater than eight months per year. Secondly, participation in one sport to the exclusion of participation in other sports. And lastly, it involves pupil children, so anyone under the age of 12. Why specialize? There are increasing emphasis placed on sports accomplishment in society. Uh, there's financial rewards for elite, ath elite athletes, uh, and there's a public perception 
of the value of elite, elite athletic competition. Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, in 2008, popularized the 10,000 hour rule for achieving expertise in a particular skill set. In this book, he discusses the need for deliberate practice for athletic development in general. However, there is very little support for the necessity of high amount of deliberate practices for uh, children for the development of athletic uh, elite performance in adults. There is evidence that early specialization in music results in mastery of an instrument over a predictable amount of time. This intuitively makes sense with the exception of a few musical geniuses of a vast majority of musicians achieve success by starting at an early age, specializing and increasing their participation and having a dedicated full-time commitment to practice. But this does not necessarily translate to sports. One study looking at thousands of student athletes who specialized in sports found that 53% of the athletes who specialized early were female. They started playing sports at around age six and specialized at age seven, and they played their primary sport for an average of almost 13 hours a week for 11 months out of the year. Also, students at larger schools are more likely to specialize. Early sports specialization has detrimental effects that are, vi are very significant. Children who specialize early in a single sport may have less age appropriate sports skills as their skill as their peers, and they are deprived of the opportunity for sports diversification, which prevents development of neuromuscular patterns that may be protective of injury. In fact, the study has found that children who highly specialize early on in a sport have over two times the risk of an overuse injury. The perception is that early sport specialization leads to elite athletic performance. However, there is no evidence to support this. In a German study, 88% of Olympians reported playing more than one sport as a child. In another study, 97% of professional athletes believed being a multi-sport athlete as a youth was beneficial to their success as a professional later on in life. Some studies have suggested that late specialization in a particular sport, which is defined as specializing in a sport older than age 12, may result in better athletic achievement than early specialization. Treatment of overuse injuries is usually extremely simple, but it may be extremely difficult to do in many cases because it requires complete rest of the injured area, physical therapy, uh, and a reduction in, in participation, which may be very hard for athletes, parents, and coaches to do when playoffs are happening, tryouts are coming up, uh, there's been payment for competition. So there is lots, of to, lots to discuss in terms of treatment options when overuse injuries are uh, discussed with the physician. Additionally, exploring the cause for the injury is very important to prevent the injury to become chronic, and surgery is rare, uh, rarely needed in overuse injuries. One specific treatment method for overuse injuries is integrative neuromuscular training. The goal is to enhance coordination and mechanics of movement. If a young athlete does end up specializing in a single sport, adding neuromuscular training may help prevent injuries by developing other motor skills that help to counteract and protect the body. To begin wrapping up, I will give some general recommendations for preventing overuse injuries. The American Orthopedic Society for Sports Medicine made a position statement stating that early sports specialization has not been shown to be beneficial for high caliber athletic performance at the national team Olympic professional level, and in fact may be detrimental to athletic performance. It is recommended that young athletes avoid playing one sport greater than eight months of the year. There is an injury rate of 62 to 90 percent of athletes who exceed playing a sport more uh, more than eight months in a year. Uh, an athlete should not participate in more than 16 hours total of sport per week. Uh, otherwise, they may be more likely to sustain an injury of any kind. 
Athletes who participate in sport more than more hours per week than age are more likely to have an injury. For example, a 10-year-old should not play more than 10 hours per week uh, in a sport. Uh, that includes practice and competition. In conclusion, early sport specialization is increasingly common and leads to overuse injuries in adolescence. Encouraging multi-sport participation may be protective and changing the attitudes about attaining elite sports performance will require agreement among parents, coaches, medical personnel, and athletes. Thank you.